When we buy wine or liquor, sometimes they come in a box like this, a conventional one. But more often than not, they don't come with a box at all. When giving as a gift, typically we use this type of bag. Kind of boring and with no top cover. Once, I bought this wine with a box that is unconventional. It can easily be collapsed flat, therefore easy to store, and reusable as well. So I thought it would be nice to make one myself. Now I'm sharing this do-it-yourself project with you. First, you just need to define the height and width of the box. Then use this template and formula as shown here. You can download the template and the formula files from the links below. The primary dimensions width and height are in uppercase letters indicated. The secondary dimensions are in lowercase and defined by the formulas. This one defines the minimum cardboard size you need for your box. This is a zoomed out view of the bottom flaps of the box. These thick lines in the template are cut through lines. While the thin lines are folding lines. As shown in the inset video, score a shallow cut along the folding line so that it can fold correctly later on. After completing the cuts on the bottom flaps, the zoom out view indicates the additional tapers and notches that must be cut. An important detail is that all the angles are 45 degrees and must be perfect for the box to work. Pay attention to this protruding lip as well. Now let's get started. To determine the width and height of the box, we need to measure the diameter and height of the wine bottle. The easiest way to measure the diameter is by using a digital caliper. Here I set it to millimeter measurement. Rotate the bottle just to verify the consistency of the diameter and measurement. Here I got a measurement of 74.4 millimeters. If you don't have a caliper, you can use a measuring tape. Take a measurement of the bottom diameter and eyeball the reading. Granted, it's not as accurate as a caliper, but it'll do. For the height, obviously you can't get a good reading this way when the bottle is upright. The best way is to turn the bottle upside down on the table. Make sure the measuring tape is flush with the bottle and the tip is on the table along with the mouth of the bottle. Take a reading at the tip of the bottom of the bottle. Here I got 297 millimeters. Transfer the readings to the formula worksheet. Using the formula, I rounded off W to 76 millimeters and H to 300 millimeters. The secondary dimensions here are all a fraction of W, except for D and G. D is a function of B, and I rounded it off to 22. G is a function of A, and I rounded it off to 40. Finally, the minimum width and length of the cardboard are calculated. Let's see if my cardboard is the right size. The width is greater than the minimum required.
Here the length is greater than the minimum as well. So the cardboard size is fine. This is the almost completed outline I drew on the cardboard. I use a framing square ruler because I need the longer length that it provides. Take note that the dark blue lines are the lines to be cut, while the red colored lines are the lines to be folded. I also jotted in the measurements on the cardboard for your reference. Now let's take a closer look at the bottom flaps. The key dimension is A and is distributed in all the flaps. It's important that the midpoint of each width is perfectly centered, meaning both the left and the right of the center are exactly the same. You want to get a perfect 45 degrees for all the angles. Using this 45 degree triangle, if the center point and the corner tip are aligned, like shown here, then you're good. If it's not, the folding action of the bottom won't work very well. Precision is required. Here I've completed drawing the outlines of the bottom flaps. Note the 45 degree angles and the other dimensions such as G. Take note of the protruding lips and the small notches. Here with red folding lines and blue cut lines drawn in. Next, cut the cardboard using a metal ruler and a sharp blade. Score shallow cuts on the red folding lines. How it's done is illustrated above. This is the almost completely cut and scored cardboard. Pre-fold the scored lines. I left these two portions unfinished to show you how it's done. Use a sharp blade to cut out this small triangle. Then use a pointed tip scissor such as one you get from a Swiss knife, and cut the small notch. This notch feature helps with the snugness and sturdiness when collapsing and expanding the box. Next, let's work on the tapers, particularly the bottom ones indicated in blue. Draw slanting lines here, here, and here. You can just eyeball these lines. Precision is not necessary. Let's also draw tapers on the rest of the edges of the other flaps. Here, all the tapers are cut. Finally, don't forget this small notch. Use the 90 degree edge of a ruler and align it like so and draw a small line like so. Then use a blade to cut through the red lines and use a pointed sharp scissor to cut through the lines you just drew.
Now we've completed all the necessary cuts. Fold the score lines with a metal ruler one more time. Check if you can form a box with those folds. Make sure these two 45 degree tapered flaps are folded as well. Now we're ready to glue them up and assemble. I use a multi-purpose glue. Wood glue can also be used. They're easy to work with, dries relatively quickly, and dried glue can be removed easily from your fingers. These two adjacent flaps are to be glued together. Make sure the edges of these two 45 degree tapered flaps are perfectly aligned. Let's put a small dab of glue on the smaller flap. Spread it evenly. And glue it on top of the larger flap, taking care that the edges are aligned. Hold it for a few seconds. Then maybe get a paper clip to hold them together. Let's do the other side the same way. This side is exactly the same as the other side. Make sure the two flaps are aligned. Let's put the paper clip. After you've done, let it dry from 5 to 10 minutes. After the flaps are firmly glued together, remove the paper clips. Then check the glued flaps whether they can flex freely by pushing them with your thumbs, like this. Then insert the right side flap under the left side like this. You have to exert some force for the small notches of the two flaps to come together at the center. This is how it looks like. Next, glue this long vertical flap to the edge of the other vertical side to complete the box. Let's dab some glue. Spread the glue evenly and remove excess glue. Make sure the edges are aligned. Hold on to the glue flaps with your fingers for about a minute, then leave it to dry for 5 to 10 minutes. Now you've got the completed box. Let's do a test run, shall we? Now let's collapse this box as if we're going to store it. Use your index finger to push the center of the bottom in while squeezing the sides at the same time like this. It will feel a bit tough at first but will loosen up when you collapse and expand it often.
There you go. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe and ring that bell. And happy DIY.